Hey everybody, this is Dr. Maples. Today I want to answer a common question. Can sociology majors become attorneys? Short answer is yes, but you need to make sure that you take the right classes so you get the right knowledge and skills so that you're a great attorney. Today I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process for everything that you'd need to take to make sure that you're ready for graduate school and also that you have a strong application. On top of that, we're going to talk briefly about the LSAT, a screening test that you may not know about that's an important part of the application process. We got a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. So quick fun fact, I was actually thinking about becoming an attorney when I came back to college for the second time. I was actually surprised to get to my campus and find out that there was no such thing as a law major. There was a concentration in law, which was really just this loose grouping of courses that would give me some of the information that I needed to become an attorney, but I was still going to have to find my own major in my way to the graduation stage. I ended up taking sociology classes and fell in love with that field, and the rest is history. But I did learn, because of this, that sociology is an excellent way for you to prepare for law school, make sure you get all the skills that you need, and also that you're ready for the graduate school experience. One of the other things that really excites me about sociology majors becoming attorneys is that so many areas of law are very relevant to sociology. In fact, most of them sound like courses that you would take as a student. You've probably taken courses on things like immigration or labor, criminology. These are all examples of things where sociology very much overlaps with the field of law. As such, all we have to do is make sure that you're taking the right things that you need to become a successful attorney. So as always in our job series, I want to walk you step by step through your required courses and talk about some of the things that you need to be thinking about as you prepare to become an attorney. In your intro sociology class, I want you to get some of these big ideas about things like social problems and social issues. I also want you to think about inequality because that's a field that's very relevant to a lot of fields of law. As you take your social statistics class, I also want you to be thinking about the ability to write and summarize results in a report, but also be able to read other people's reports and find errors, whether they are gaps in thinking or simply clerical errors. But get that skill developed now because it's going to be very useful when you're reading briefs and all sorts of other things in the future. Now, for your theory class, we do want to get those really big thought processes rolling. Critical thinking is going to be an important part of being an attorney, but also we want you to start practicing applying these really big macro theories to very specific cases so that you can give examples of big ideas happening in very specific scenarios. For methods, I also want you to start thinking about being a very methodological procedural thinker. Going through step by step and being able to write a sound methods report is actually great practice for what you're going to have to do in building arguments later on as an attorney. Finally, when you get to your senior capstone and you're writing a thesis, I want you to find something that interests you in the field of law that's relevant to sociology and study that. Talk about some data sets that may be on that, such as like doing a paper on immigration. But find something that interests your field of law and start getting that extra studies and things like literature and so forth that are relevant to that field. This is a great chance for you to take all these required classes that you had to take anyways, but use them to help prepare you to become an attorney one day. Now, when it gets to your sociology electives, which you generally have 12 to 15 hours of for your major, I want you to take a moment to study fields of law that interest you as they relate to sociology. Just as an example, let's pretend that you wanted to be an environmental lawyer. This is a great chance for you to take all those environment-related classes that you can find within your major. You might even want to work with the environmental sociology professor to see if you could take some directed researches, independent studies, and more. Same goes for being a family attorney. You'd want to take all those family and demography courses that you can fit in. I also think any writing-oriented classes you can take in your major are a great idea. They'll also help fulfill some gen ed requirements at your university in some situations. On top of that, too, I also suggest taking courses in uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and even stratification to understand some of the differences that people experience. That includes, by the way, unequal access to lawyers. As such, that might even be something that you want to think about when you get into practice. I think one of the cool things about an interest in law is that it overlaps very well with the idea of general education classes. You're not going to have any trouble finding gen ed classes that are going to be relevant to the things that you'll do as an attorney. For example, you can take communications classes which help you become a better presenter and speaker, which is an important part of law. You can take logic classes often as a math requirement. 
That's going to help you organize arguments and understand how other arguments are weak or have problems in them. Likewise, you'll have the chance to take things like ethics and philosophy, political science, even more courses in diversity. All of these fall in Gen Ed very easily, and you're going to have lots of classes that are going to interest you. Now, if you're doing a concentration in law with your sociology major, you probably won't have time for another minor or a certificate. But if you're at a college or university that doesn't offer anything like that concentration in law, definitely think about a minor or certificate in one of these fields. Paralegal studies is especially a great one because it's going to give you a lot of exposure to how the legal system works and also help you understand, as an attorney later on, both sides of the legal process and working with paralegals. You also have things like women and gender studies, you have race and ethnicity studies, you could definitely look at political science, history, particularly if you're interested in labor, and even philosophy. These are all programs that are going to help you become a better attorney in the long run. There are some additional skills that I want to point out to make sure that you get these somewhere along the way. This could be taking additional courses beyond your university, such as online certifications. This could also be taking specific classes just as part of the extra hours that we have built in to the university system. But in some way, you want to make sure you get these skills. They certainly include things like awareness of some of the laws that are out there. Now, taking more sociology or history classes could help you in this area, and it's really going to come down to what field of law you're thinking about. I will also say, too, learn to build an argument. If you don't get some of that information in your gen eds, you definitely want to make sure that you take something like a logic course to help you build arguments. Likewise, if there's rhetoric courses at your university, that could be another direction to think about that. You also want to have the ability to apply law to case studies. Now, sociology as a major is going to help you with that a lot, but taking additional sociology or history courses, thinking about specific problems in relation to law might be useful. This is also where directed research that focuses, again, on the specific kind of law that interests you could really be useful. Something that's probably not going to come up is time management. This applies to all graduate students. Time management is going to be one of your most important skills that you're going to learn. And frankly, as undergraduates, you very rarely get exposed to useful information on that. Good news is there's tons of free YouTube courses that talk about time management. And likewise, there's certifications that you can get for a small fee through your university and lots of other organizations. Getting these extra skills are going to, again, make sure that you're ready when you get to graduate school. I also want to raise three barriers that may not be on your radar, but I want to go ahead and put them on your radar now. The first one is the LSAT exam. This is an exam that most students will take as part of the application process for law school. The LSAT is unlike anything that you're going to see as an undergrad. In fact, I encourage you to go buy a bookstore or look up online some example LSAT questions, and you'll see what I mean. They're just phrased in ways that make your brain think, well, like an attorney. You're going to need to prepare for this exam. Good news is there's lots of opportunities and options, both free and pay, that you can use to study for this LSAT. But you do need to get a good score because this is one of those early screening things. A bad LSAT score is going to sink your application from day one. The second part is that you need to think about having a very strong application in general to law school. That's going to include a personal statement that talks about why you want to do this, why you want to go to graduate school, why you want to become an attorney, and more. You know, your LSAT is also part of that process, as well as your transcripts from the university that you've gone to and more. So you want to make sure that you have time to fill out this material because you want to get funding if you can. That means that your graduate schooling is paid for as opposed to you taking out more student loans to pay for it. I've got some videos up talking about the graduate school application process. And if there's some particular elements of that you'd like me to do a video on, let me know. I'll have some coming up in the future as well. Finally, I want to remind you that you need to apply for graduate school. It's not something that you can just go do. Generally, you'll be applying for most graduate schools in the fall. Uh, that may be November, December. You should check the law schools and see when it is that you would need to apply. But you would generally apply your senior year as you're getting ready to graduate. Note some law schools have what's called rolling admissions, so they'll also have a fall and spring deadline. It's going to be a different scenario for every law school. So what you want to do is start looking that information up now rather than waiting until the very last minute when you're on the graduation stage, shaking the president's hand and saying, OK, so now what do I do to apply for a law school? If you think about it now, you'll be done in advance. I hope by now that you see sociology is a great fit for going to law school. And if you follow all the details in my plan, you're going to make sure you get all the skills that you need and everything that you'll want to build a strong application to law school and one day be a successful attorney. 
there's a video I can make to help you in that process, you let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care.